Law Every Day with JJK. Hey everyone, welcome back to my show, Draw Every Day with JJK. I'm Jarrett J. Krasoska, also known as JJK because Draw Every Day with Jarrett J. Krasoska was way too long of a name for this YouTube show. And today, we are almost at the end of week four of doing this daily, weekday, daily, is it daily if it's just weekdays? Week daily uh, show where I am giving you practical information on how to draw, how to make art, how to tell stories with pictures, this week we're talking about color. You know, next week, next week we're talking about Star Wars. I have a new Jedi Academy book coming out soon. The next two weeks we're going to be talking about Star Wars. So uh, get ready, get your lightsabers out of storage. We're going to have some fun today. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation about colors. And again, uh, I'm going to fix my lighting this weekend so that I can have a better image of my desk when I'm painting to pick up the colors. So for now, I'm just going to be painting on my iPad using Adobe Fresco. And today I want to introduce to you the concept of opposite colors, contrasting colors. They're colors that are on the opposite sides of the color wheel. And when they come together, when you put them next to each other, there's a lot of energy there. There's a lot of vibrancy there. So our opposite colors are blue, Let's see if you know what the opposite color of blue is. The opposite color of blue is orange. And when blue and orange are right next to each other, that color really pops. Let's pull up yellow. The opposite color of yellow is, come on to this other side of the color wheel here, purple. And when purple and yellow are next to each other, they really pop. And finally, red and green are opposites. Coincidentally, the colors of Christmas. So we can use those contrasting colors to grab somebody's attention, to make a, a, a scene feel very energetic and exciting. So let me show you what I mean. Let's clear that up. Let's get a new couple new layers here. And why don't I draw a quick drawing for you? Um, why don't I draw a very quick lunch lady? And the lunch lady books are predominantly yellow. And these books were initially printed in just a limited color because it was back at a time when uh, publishers weren't very sure if graphic novels would be uh, successful amongst readers, and it's very expensive to print a book in full color. So that's why they decided to limit the color uh, to, to yellow. So they printed in yellow and black ink, predominantly yellow. So um, if Lunch Lady is predominantly yellow, here she has her yellow apron, she has her yellow gloves. So what is the opposite of yellow? Do you remember? It is purple. So if I wanted her to stand out and really pop in a scene, I'm going to put some purple colors back there. Let me get an eraser. Let me erase back some of that purple there. All right. Now, from a distance, that is color is really going to pop. Watch what happens when I make it really small. It's going to really stick out having that yellow against the purple. Now, also yesterday we talked about warm and cold colors. When you're creating a scene, warm colors come forward. Cold colors tend to recede into the background. So this was a very bold purple. Let me make it a lighter purple. 
Now you can imagine that if we were using real paints here, we couldn't just undo something like that. And that's fine. I'm just, again, I'm just using this iPad just to show you quickly what you can do with your real world materials. Or if you have a digital device in which you can draw on, that's great. Sometimes I'm using digital uh, devices, uh, especially digital devices that can recreate the look of physical material. All right, so let's hide the lunch lady layers. And let's make another drawing here. And let's draw, you know, I have a book that my longtime readers will recognize. It's not in print anymore. And it's called Hello Said the Slug. It's about this giant orange slug who wants to be friends with this kid. And that kid has no patience at all for that giant talking slug. It's a pretty weird story and came out a long time ago now. Let's see, 2000 and 2006? And unfortunately it's not available as an ebook because ebooks have not been invented yet. I'm gonna make one change, one of my biggest regrets, and let's see if I, I have it here. I don't even have it here on my, on my bookshelf. I wish I had drawn the slug's eyes to be googly like that. For some reason, I didn't. I should have done more research on the look of actual slugs. So I'm gonna have some revisionist history here. So the slug, if you remember, he is bright, orange. And the boy that he wants to be friends with, and the boy has no patience for him. Um, actually, you know, I, I have to, I have to take that back. In the original draft, the slug wanted to be the boy's friend. In the revisions, it ended up being that uh, the boy and the slug were friends, but they were spending too much time together. And the boy lost his patience. It's hard to keep track of all these books that I've written and what was the early drafts, what was the final drafts. But all along, though, this kid was designed to be predominantly blue in his color palette. A little bit too bold of a color here. Let's see. And of course, uh, blue and orange are opposites. So I used those contrasting colors to contrast those two very different personalities. And who do you suppose this is going to be? Readers of my chapter books probably know already. Fans of platypuses probably know already. Uh, fans of 1980s cop movies that grown-ups had when they were kids might know this. This is a character from Platypus Police Squad. And this is... Detective Rick Zango. And I want to show you how I might use lighting and contrasting colors to make this character pop from his background. Okay, so I'm going to give this character a gloomy dark green background here. Some greens and some blues. He's often investigating crimes that happen at night down by the docks. Okay, now I'm going to create a layer of color that is just his main color. So I'm going to get a brown for his fur. It's nice to have a digital brush that recreates the unpredictability of physical tools. A 
dark blue for his sunglasses and his jacket and a royal blue for his beak and webbed feet. Very loose watercolor sketch here for you. Um, okay, so oftentimes the Platypus Police Squad characters are, you know, the interiors are all black and white, but the covers are all in full color, all right? So I use lighting to uh, accentuate some things there when I'm working on these characters in full color. So since this character is in front of a dark green background, what is the opposite of green but red? So I'm going to come in and I'm going to select a watercolor brush. And I'm going to get a bright red. And let's imagine this character is, oops, way too big, dude. Way too big of a brush. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Um, maybe the character is standing in front of a neon sign. Look, I forgot to charge my Apple Pencil before I film this. You see how low uh, my Apple Pencil has for batteries there? Totally, totally yeah, sold myself out there letting you guys know that. Okay, so the character is standing in front of maybe some neon lighting. We could have that red neon pick up in a few spots. Now when we do that, Just that hint of the opposite color now is making this character pop. And what I can do, I'm gonna come in with another layer here and make it even darker just behind the character. And that contrast of light and dark and red and green will further make this character pop off of the background. And look at that, look, look at what that's doing really is making that pop. And look at what that red in front of that green does. Also take note on how I used opposite colors in the design of these book covers. These characters are, are standing in front of a purplish bluish skyline cityscape and the sky itself is an orange yellowish color. And in this book, there's that midnight blue sky, and we put the type in orange, because orange and blue are opposites. And where else have I used opposite colors in my book covers? Let me find another example for you of where I might have used opposite colors to help express the mood. Ah, here. Well, I guess this is a more a warm and cold color example, but it, there is there is some contrasting there between the purple and and yellow. So when this character does not want to nap, her room is dark, so lots of cold purples, and outside it's very bright, so there's a lot of yellows. So that contrasting color brings a lot of attention here, and then that yellow light right against that character, against that purple background, makes that character pop. And that is really, in the end, what uh, opposite colors do. They make everything pop. So let's check in with the pugs right now, shall we? It's time for Pug Cam! Well, we're, we're doing some crafting with the pugs today here in the Krasoska house. And so uh, happy Passover, happy Easter, happy anything that you celebrate. Teach your dogs to craft. All right, it is that time of the show in which I hop on my rotary phone that's connected to the internet through a phone wire. Phone wire, that's a thing that we all relied on before everything went to wireless, but it's hot wired with my old Atari and my NES, the original version, and I just plug in Duck Hunt and the Meyer Brothers combination cartridge, and I talk live to my friends who write and illustrate books, and they're coming in from all over the country, maybe even all over the globe eventually. But for starters, 
Today, we're gonna start on the other side of the country. I'm speaking to you from the Northeast. I'm gonna patch into my friend Aaron who lives in the Pacific Northwest. I'm talking about Aaron Nels Stanky. He is the author and illustrator of these awesome graphic novels called Mr. Wolf's Class. Uh, there's Mystery Club, there's Lucky Stars, and then there's Mr. Wolf's Class, which is the first book which I cannot find. I don't know if anyone else out there has this problem, but in my house right now, we can't find anything. It's a mess. It is a mess. And, and keeping it clean is like raking during a hurricane. It's just pointless. At any rate, let's talk about Mr. Wolf's Class. I just love these books. Imagine if you will, imagine if Beverly Cleary was a graphic novelist. And that's the best way that I can describe these books to you. They're slice of life stories about kids in an elementary school. You know, and despite the fact that they are all animals, it's a very diverse group of kids, very representative to our classrooms. And, and you know, Aaron brings a very unique perspective to this because he's a teacher. He teaches at uh, an elementary school out there in Oregon. And I just, I love the pacing. I love the realness. I love Aaron's art. It's calming, it's soothing, it's fun. Aaron Nell Stanky, his work just makes me smile. And uh, Grown Ups, you know, I'm recommending a lot of these books too uh, as a way to introduce you to work uh, that maybe you didn't know about and perhaps that you did know about. But at any rate, uh, what I'm trying to say to you, Grown Ups, is that I have a great local independent bookstore. It's called High Five Books. It just opened this past fall. And I'm working with High Five Books to create curated lists of every single artist I have on this show. So grown-ups can visit the uh, description on my YouTube page for a direct link. If you ever see one of our guests and you see these books and you think, I would like those books in my home, it's a way for you to support the artist and to support uh, a great person who has a great store. Uh, or also, of course, check to see if your local independent bookstore is is selling books online and shipping. But at any rate, let's let's head over to the Pacific Northwest, hop on the old rotary phone, and call my friend Aaron. Aaron Nell Stanky, thank you so much for being here today. Hi everybody. Hi Jarrett. Thank you for having me on your show. My name is Aaron L. Steinke and I'm the author of the Mr. Wolf's Class graphic novel series. I wanted to show you some of the steps involved in making the drawings in Mr. Wolf's Class. So this page that you see here from Lucky Stars, the third Mr. Wolf's Class book, um, started out first as an idea, then a sketch, and then I cleaned up the artwork. I did it in ink and then I colored it and eventually it was printed and bound into a book. Okay, here's my sketch of Mr. Wolf riding his skateboard down the sidewalk, drinking his coffee. All right. Now that I've penciled it, I'm going to ink it. So I always start with the head because I think the head is the most important part of the character. I used to be really shy about having people watch me draw. I'm actually still pretty shy and self-conscious about it. So this is a challenge for me. I know that in on, the only way I can become a good skateboarder is if I try and I fail. Uh, but failing involves falling down, and at my age, I have to protect my hands. So I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of skating and falling down. I'm going to be a little more cautious, but I will also never become a great skater. <laughs> I guess that's a trade-off. Um, now, drawing... If you make a bad drawing, are you going to get hurt? 
maybe you'll feel bad in the moment, but you're going to heal. You're going to feel better later. <clears throat> and there you have it. Mr. Wolf writing a skateboard, drinking coffee. Thank you for drawing with me. Bye. Well, Aaron, I so appreciate you taking the time to, to draw for us. And also, uh, grownups, uh, Aaron was nice enough to email me a nice PDF image of that drawing he made for us today of Mr. Wolf on his skateboard. Uh, so you can check out a link for that as well. I'll put it up in the description for this YouTube page so you can download it and your kids can color it, add on to it, whatever you'd like. So now, let's get some family time drawing. Family draw time! All right, we are drawing as a family. Lucky, welcome back to the show. <laughs> All right, so something that Lucky does around the house is they are they draw their toys a lot. And I remember doing that as a kid. So today we're going to draw portraits of our favorite toys. Lucky, why don't you introduce everyone this to is, your favorite toy right now? This is right Midnight, now. and she's an LOL. And there is another version of her, but this is in like a case thing with her brother and her little sister and her big sister. So Yes, and so Lucky's drawing a lot of LOLs and collecting LOLs right now. Here's my favorite toy that I played with when I was Lucky age, and this is Batman. Uh, specifically, Batman from the early 1980s Super Friends show. And I held on to him, and if you squeeze his legs, he punches. Let's see if it still works. I don't want to break it. Ready? Oh, maybe not. Maybe it doesn't work. Ready? There we go. A little bit. He's a little. He's a little bit arthritic. I guess he's, this is arthritic Batman. He's kind of weak. And and so I have my Batman. I have my Robin. I have my uh, Joker and my Batmobile, and I've I've kept them up in my studio. So we're gonna draw our favorite toys. And it works out so well that Lucky is a lefty and I'm a righty so we can position ourselves so that we don't get in each other's blockhead. way while we draw together. Okay, kind of blockhead. <laughs> and here's, here's why, here's why oh God, having crazy. all of these toys, if you, if, you, if, you, if you visit an artist's studio, there's a, especially an illustrator of books for kids, um, and really any 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 illustrator that I've seen, you're going to find a lot of toys on display. And I have a lot of my childhood toys on display, some that were the very toys that I played with as a kid, and some that are uh, the toys I played with a kid, but you know, my grandmother had made me get rid of them. and so I, I I found them on eBay and bought them again uh, because our toys are, our, our first imaginative play. It's, it's our first time that we are are writing stories. We're writing stories with how these toys interact with one another, and it's it's one of the our first instances of of being creative. Even before we know how to write words or or even draw pictures, we are doing the work of creativity and storytelling through our play. And that can that can that continues on. And so you know what I went to, I didn't take my own advice here, and I started drawing the details of Batman's face before I started thinking about all of the major shapes. <laughs> so I drew his head a little bit too big. So I'm going to reassess that. And yeah, now, as a, as an adult, when I take a look at these toys and I have these toys. Mm -hmm on display they just they remind me of happy times I, I, I can remember playing with this batman toy and the super uh power friends uh in my driveway with my buddy pat who lived next door to me and i'm glad that i was able to hold on to some of these toys i can understand why my grandmother wanted to make space and and, and give things to my younger cousins um some toys I, I wish that I still had just because I have this emotional connection to these toys. Mm. I'm also, I guess you could say, I'm a bit of a pack rat as well. Uh, and I'm also a very sentimental person. <laughs> That's a head. That's great. That's coming out great, Lou. Mm. Hey, 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 hey. 
do, do, silent, no, 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 it can't be silent. <laughs> I used to love reading Batman comics, I still do, and I used to love coming home from school and watching the, the live action TV series, and of course in 1989, when the Tim Burton Batman movie was released in the movie theaters, I was, see how I was about 11 or 12 years old and it just blew my mind. Uh, Batman had a huge influence on me in my storytelling. I think you can definitely see that in my Lunch Lady series. This is high. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> Still, um, this, and that, and this. So think about gathering up some of your and favorite that. toys, and, and make that. make some portraits of your and of your favorite that. toys. And this. And I and wish that. I wish that I planned it out a little more. I did go and too that. too quick into the details because now I want to make his legs longer. But I don't want to get too close to the edge of this paper here. And this, and that. <laughs> oh, he needs this. Okay. This wow. is coming out great, Lou. Thanks. And I definitely would make my own Batman stories and Batman comics as well. And Lucy has whole sheets of paper that are filled up with LOL portraits. Yes, I do. Okay, done. Done. Awesome. Okay, let me make a few more marks here and some more shadow here. And I'll make a little more shadow here. Okay, while I finish up, I'm going to say again, thank you so much for watching our show. We appreciate you all drawing every day with us. Uh, let's see, grown-ups, you can uh, submit your kids' art via my website. Uh, that's the best place right now to do it. There's a e dedicated email on my website on a dedicated page for draw every day you can still share stuff on social media but i'm not able to keep track of all of it uh, because it ends up being a lot so to having that one email grown ups really helps me collect all the art um what else what else okay tomorrow is brainstorming day i'm going to be putting something out on uh missive on my uh social media channels for the grown-ups to, to get requests from their young artists uh, and next week is going to be Star Wars week. And the week after that is going to be Star Wars week because I am celebrating the publication of my final Jedi Academy Woo! book. At last, Jedi is going to be here uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, what else? Am I forgetting anything else? I don't know. It's hard to keep track of things these days. At any rate, keep drawing. Check out uh, this great track. Uh, we're playing De Colores by the, by the Lucky Band once again because we're talking about color this week. Uh, jam out to the lucky band while you enjoy your great artwork and we'll see you tomorrow please click like and subscribe and keep drawing see you soon Se visten lo
los campos en la primavera De colores, de colores son los pajaritos que vienen de afuera De colores, de colores es el arco eris que vemos luz Y por eso los grandes amores de muchos colores me gustan a mí.